Ladies and gentlemen, joining me on the line, his name is Bill Ingvall. He's coming to town this Saturday over at Horizon Event Center. Good morning, Bill. Good morning, bud. How you doing? Not too bad. Now, uh, okay, so in, in complete honesty and trying to prepare for this interview, it was, okay, what's Bill Ingvall, like, what to focus on? Because you got stand-up, and it's like, oh, he's been in movies. Oh, he's been a game show host. Oh, he's uh, done sitcom TV. He's done this. He's done that. What's going on in your life? <laughs> Well, there, there's a couple reasons. One, idle time is not my friend, so I need to I need to stay busy. But you know what? It's funny in this business; it's real easy to get caught up in what you have not done. Okay. And then then somebody like yourself starts listening off that stuff. You go, oh yeah, I guess I have done some stuff. <laughs> yeah. Oh, I forgot Dancing with the Stars. You did that. <laughs> yeah, I guess Bill Ingvall on Ice is the only thing left. I don't know. <laughs> oh, could you imagine the blue collar comedy tour on Ice? Do you really want to see Larry in that tight? Maybe. Maybe. I'm not, Maybe I'm, secretly. Possibly. I don't know. It could be one of those things. <laughs> I really have been blessed to be able to do everything. But I will be honest with you that, you know, the TV and movies and all that are great. But uh, I still love stand-up. You know, it's and I think for a couple reasons. One, because especially in this day and age, people got to laugh. I mean, my God. The, uh, you know, you just get inundated with bad news and all this and hate and evil and all that. And it, that's why when people that come see my show are just going to see a clean relatable show and you know in fact i even tell people i don't i don't even want you to think like we're going to see a comedian because that kind of conjures up different visions and i said i just it's more like words just sitting around your living room and i'm the funny guy doing the talking you know what i've started to notice that about a lot of and and not just your show in particular but it's kind of that going thing where it's like it's not a show it's a conversation with people it's storytelling right. well, and I think that's what people want because that's what they can relate to. I have much more fun doing my show now than I did when I first started because when I first started, I was trying to get a joke every 15 seconds out, and it's just tiring. And at 62 now, I'm just like, let's just talk. <laughs> I'll make you laugh. Don't worry. <laughs> I'll take care of it. It's, it's fine. Yeah, I got it's fine. it. I got it. Bill Ingvall joining me on the line right now. He's going to be at the Horizon Events Center this weekend. Is it harder or easier to be a stand-up or, you know, a uh, what is the proper term? Because everybody always says, oh, you're a DJ. And it's like, ah, I don't really do disc jockey stuff. But what is the term now? Uh, stand-up? Yeah, it's still stand-up. I okay. mean, uh, it's uh, to answer your question, I do think it's harder now because people, uh, I don't know what happened, but people have just become so uber sensitive about everything. And, you know, it's, uh, you really have to watch what you bring up. You know, in other words, that's why I don't do any political or religious stuff in my show because it's just too much of a sensitive subject for everybody right now. And, yeah. and I don't know when it became that way or why it became that way, but it just seems like we all have this huge chip on our shoulder, but for really no reason. Yeah, it's either you have to completely avoid it or completely turn into it, right? Right. It's like, remember, I remember a day when, you know, like if you and I had a difference of opinion, it's like, all right, well, we disagree to disagree. Now it's like, well, if you don't think like I do, I'll kill you. It's like, wait, what? <laughs> <laughs> That's a little harsh. <laughs> a little, but, you know, like nowadays, are there jokes and things that you think are funny that you just keep out of the show because you just don't want to deal with it? Um, You know what? Not really anymore because it's been so long since I, first of all, I, I to do political or any kind of edgy stuff, you really got to know what you're talking about, and you got to have really thick skin. And, and also, the other problem is you don't know what people are reading into it. I mean, I can tell you a joke, and I've I've had this happen before. I've done a joke on stage, and then I'll get a post on my website or somebody that they were just completely offended by that. I'm like, wait, what joke was that? And so, you know, uh, I don't know. It's it, it is more difficult, but I've kind of found this uh, this happy medium ground where uh, everybody everybody seems to be happy with it. It's it's funny the parallels that when you say it like that, the, it's kind of the same thing with radio where it's I could say oh, one sure. thing one thing today that will be perfectly fine, and if I say the same thing tomorrow, it'll be taken wrong by somebody. Or 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 that what they'll do is somebody will tell them what you said, and then they misconstrue it. <laughs> uh, you know because. Yeah, it's like uh, the show I'm bringing in there. Uh, a lot of the show now is looking at life through my wife's eyes of being married to a comedian. Okay. And it's all very, you know, I'm the fall guy. Uh, it's very much self-deprecating and, you know, that I'm the idiot. But yet I still have had women go, well, he's just bashing women. It's like, no, did you listen to the show at all? <laughs> <laughs> It is like that, though. Uh, so how much is the show just based on, like, not not so much the shtick, so, you know, right. 
but how much of it is just, wow, this actually happened to me and it's real life and it's just, it's funny? Well, yeah, probably quite a bit of it, um, just because that's the only way I really know how to write stuff. Uh, and, you know, Leno told me a long time ago, he said, don't ever do jokes about something you don't know about because people, the audience will know. Yeah. You know, uh, it's like uh, an example of the, kind of what I'm, I'm what they call a snacker. You know, like I swear to you, I, it's like an, I have an inner alarm clock that goes off about midnight, and I got to have some ice cream or something sweet. Yeah. And so one night I got up and was wanting some ice cream, and I went in, and there was no ice cream. So I w- went into the pantry because a lot of times when I do jobs like there, uh, you know, like they'll give me a basket of goodies made by local merchants or whatever, and I'll put them in the pantry. Okay. Well, one, one night I got up about midnight and there was no ice cream. So I walked in the pantry and there was a cellophane bag with a blue bow on it. Inside of it were 10 double stuffed chocolate dipped Oreos, which Perfect. were just, yeah. So I got me a glass of milk, sat down, ate all 10 of those cookies. The next morning I get up and pour in a cup of coffee and Gail's in the, my wife's in the pantry. I said, what you looking for? And she goes, where's those dog cookies that the vet gave us? <laughs> <laughs> and I was like, you don't put a bow on dog cookies. Why is it in the pantry? <laughs> yeah, why is it in the pantry? Put it with the dog food. The good news is I haven't had fleas in about six months, which is awesome. That's perfect. That's yeah. what everybody wants to hear. <laughs> <laughs> he was hey, nice, and he doesn't have fleas. <laughs> his, his his coat's really shiny, too. Yeah. The mange is acting up. but <laughs> Yeah. He's got, a, he's got a little bit of Mississippi luck out in him. <laughs> yeah. Bill Engvall coming to the Horizon Events Center. Now, someone will probably call you and go, I don't think it was very funny that he was making fun of dogs that have mange. Yeah, how how <laughs> dare he? How dare he? Yeah. What else is going on in your life right now other than being on the road? Are you still doing like the podcast stuff? No, you know, I, I wanted, I really enjoyed the podcast, but I didn't realize it's a full-time job. Yeah. I mean, you really got to, you can't just dabble in it. So I put that on the back burner for a little bit, but uh, like currently I'm in L.A. I just finished shooting another episode of Last Man Standing, and then uh, on Wednesday I'm going to shoot uh, Meredith Vieira's uh, 25 Words or Less game show, and then I, uh, I hit the road and come see y'all. So it's, you know, I'm still staying busy, but I'm I'm looking for that finish line. You know, I've got an idea when I want to, you know, because I. The thing is, I always want to do this as long as I'm enjoying it, but yeah. if I ever stop, you know, into because I don't want to be that act that just walks through the act. You know, we've all seen a show where you go, well, he mailed that in. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, and that, because that's not fair to the fans. And, uh, you know, and and, and and I just, I don't want to do that. So right now everything's good, but we'll see what happens. Um, as long as I can keep writing material and people keep showing up, then I guess I'll keep doing it. But uh, I, I, I really do still enjoy the stage time. It's, it's just really, a, there's no other job where, you know, like, honestly, I, I almost I have it easier than, than y'all do because, you know, I well, if I do a joke, I get an immediate reaction. You know, I, I guess DJed for a while for a friend of mine on a radio station, and, you know, you could throw out the best joke you think you got, and you don't know that somebody's not in their car going, ah, this sucks. Yeah. <laughs> it's my wife talking. She's like, why are you doing traffic on a different channel? I, it, it's the job. It's the yeah. <laughs> Just leave me a, it's, it's how it works. I don't know what to tell are you. you. Enjo- are you enjoying this house, honey? Because <laughs> no, she crushes me in salary. I will tell you that right now, and I am fine oh, with that. Oh wow, yeah, that's yeah. But you know what? You're okay with that, and that's cool. You know, see, my problem is my wife will go, "Hey, you, you know, you ought to do a bit on this." I'm like, I, I think I got this, honey. I've been doing it for 40 years. And of course, then I'll go on the road and try it when <laughs> she's not around, and it works. And then you can never tell her. No. No, I, I tried it, it didn't work, and then she'll sit on an album and go, oh, I thought you didn't do that. Well, I, well, I thought it up, hon. I don't know what you're talking yeah, about. Yeah, I, I had to rework it a lot. <laughs> <laughs> there was a lot of tinkering going in. There was it. a lot of editing going on there. Tell me, how long have you, got, have you guys been married? 37 years. What's the key to it? I'll tell you right now, the key is I go away. Is it really? <laughs> I'm like, I swear, I'm the perfect husband. I go on the road, I pick up a check, I come home, I drop it off, I leave again. Oh, and you bought new stuff. Awesome. Yeah. <laughs> Someone's been the target. Now, you know, I, I think that part of the problem with, uh, if this is billing by the counselor now. Okay. Um, I think part of the problem, the reason marriages don't last as long as they used to is that I think we live in a throwaway generation. You know, it's like if your phone's broke, get a new one. If your car's broke, get a new one. If your marriage doesn't work, get a new one. You know, nobody works at it anymore. Uh, and, and Gail and I, listen, we have a great marriage. We've had our moments. But, uh, you know, I the thought of dating again, oh, God, you know, that, that would, I, 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 I told Frank, I told my wife one night, I said, God forbid something ever happened to us. I said, I, I could never date again. I said, I would just, if I really needed some 
human touch, I would just go to Vegas and get a thousand dollar night hooker. It'd be fun. <laughs> just like, oh, because I just I have a friend that's dating. He's using online services, and it's just like, ugh. It is like a menu now, isn't it? I'll take uh, a number ten. Is, yeah, yeah, <laughs> yeah. And plus, I don't trust online anyway because everybody can put up whatever they, they can post whatever they want, and then all of a sudden the real person shows up and you're like, wait, that's not even close to what your profile was. Well, here goes two hours of my life I'll never get back. Oh, uh, can you imagine? And it's you know what though, you you say it like that with a little bit of the humor in it, but it's true. Mm-hmm. Well, and I think that's what makes you know, to bring this back to to real comedy. Um, is that's what people want is they and that's like when i do my show you know i keep it clean i keep it relatable and that's all people want they just want to know that you kind of have the same life that they do you know like you you've experienced the same things that they do well it's it's the same thing as like when uh the guys on uh you know espn or whatever you know go off and they're talking about their million dollar contract that they're not getting you know that extra million it's like ah, it's have, having a hard time to relating to your problems right yeah now. i really can't wrap my head around that one <laughs> But uh, see, I, I'm 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 going to get eighty six million dollars a year for three years, and wait, you're griping? I'm sorry, yeah. what? You get to play football all day? Screw you! Uh, <laughs> I heard uh, I heard uh, you were talking to uh, Foxworthy on uh, the podcast. I was listening to that yesterday, and you guys were talking about f- football. Who is your team? Cowboys. Cowboys. Yeah, I've been a Dallas Cowboy fan since I was a youngster. Since basically as I knew it, because that's where we grew up, you know. Yeah. Um, that's my pro team, and then the the Longhorns are my college team. Oh, Longhorns. Okay, so you you face one of our teams fairly regularly here. Yeah, 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 and generally it's way too close for my comfort. Dude, Iowa State all of a sudden got good. That Matt Campbell, he's, he's oh my not God, a bad he's coach. Amazing. Yeah, yeah. Well, you know what I think is interesting too is is uh, and I, by the way you'll. You may regret bringing this up because I love talking sports. The, uh, I think that uh, there's a real trend now in in sport, especially football, uh, that the older guys, the older coaches are, are are bowing out. You know, they they want these new the new Cliff Kingsburys and uh, yeah. Sean Sean McVeighs and uh, because it's just kind of a changing of the guard, and I think it's great. Yeah, see, but my team, I have Kirk Ferentz as my head coach. Oh. Yeah, the guy who won't leave. But it's it's one of those things. It's like, do you do you want him to go, or do you want him to stay? And right. you know, you're guaranteed a winning season every year. Yeah, <laughs> it's like I yeah I don't know you know. And plus, I you know, I'll be honest with you, I, I feel sorry for the coaches because you know every every school and every team goes through a down period because it's, it's just not your time. Yeah, and buddy, they're the first on the chopping block, and nobody ever says. You know what? Our running back only ran for forty yards this year, so uh, we're going to keep him. But you're going to go. <laughs> What'd you think of uh, Mac Brown go back to North Carolina? <clears throat> I, you know, I love Mac, and I, th- you know, I think, uh, I think, you know, coaches are like players. I think that there's something in them that they just they can't let go of it. Is and, it the uh, the idle time thing that you were talking about earlier? I think a lot of, but you know, Mac had the TV gig. He was, I mean, I was when Mac became an uh, uh, an announcer uh, on, and was on the TV I was like man you you you've hit the lottery again yeah <clears throat> but I think there's I think they missed that that adrenaline rush you know the are we going to be able to do can I can I turn this team around you know I have friends that are played in the NFL and they uh they say the hardest thing in the world is to retire because you know, your whole life has been about you. And then as soon as you retire, you're pretty much relegated to, you know, celebrity golf tournaments and signing autographs. Yeah, horrible existence. Yeah. Like, yeah you're <laughs> I remember <laughs> I remember walking through Vegas, uh, the C- Caesars Palace, and there was Pete Rose outside a uh, sports memorabilia thing signing autographs for 85 bucks a piece. And I was <sighs> like, and he had this sour puss look on his head, like, you're getting eighty five bucks every time you sign your name. I, I think there'd be a grin on my face like the like the Joker in Batman. <laughs> I, I know I was supposed to be kind of done with you in fifteen minutes. What do you think? Right. I'm, I'm sitting in a car in L. A. Traffic, so I'm good. We can talk for hours. Oh, perfect. I've got. I've, it's keeping me out of a meeting at this point, so I'm all right with this. <laughs> uh, See, that's why our relationship is so good. We're at least honest with each other. Neither one of us said because I really enjoy talking to you. We. <laughs> you'll be like, what'd you do today? Ah, oh, God, I was on the phone with. Bill involved uh, for like yeah, four yeah. hours but it was a good conversation <laughs> it was a good conversation he seems decent yeah uh, he's okay not great yeah. not horrible but... i wouldn't date him but you know <laughs> <laughs> what what do you follow more pro or college football i gotta be honest with you, uh, i think i probably follow them both equally but i will be honest with you i enjoy college more 
because these kids are playing because they want to play. Yeah. You know, it's they're not they don't have the eighty nine million dollar contracts and stuff. They're just playing because they're playing for their school. And I'm so I always get so happy whenever I hear about like a kid that could go pro and he decided to stay for his fourth year. I I have a real problem with guys. And I understand it, but I have a problem with these kids that go one and done. You know. Yeah. I, in fact, I have a theory that if you have a if you ha- get a scholarship and you leave to go to the pros, then you have to pay the school back the entire what would have been the full amount of your scholarship because you're taking it away from some kid who may just want to play. You know, like yeah. a Rudy or something. You know, some kid that just wants to uh, just enjoys playing, wants to represent his team and. So I really uh, respect the, the kids that uh, that stay the full four. Tom Herman. And, and the other thing is, in reality, is the chances of you going and make it in the pros are so minimal. Why wouldn't you want that that safety net? You know, like okay, well at least I got a degree in marketing or whatever. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It, it's kind of like, did you ever think about that when you're starting stand up though? Well, like, no, what's because my safety uh, net? you know my contracts were like eighty nine dollars a week, so it wasn't like I was thrown back. <laughs> 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 the, yeah, but. But you know, it's uh, yeah. I think you, I understand your point that there was a uh, you know there was times in my career that I thought you know what this has got to work because I ain't got it. I, I'm I, I'm not trained to do anything else. Yeah. And if it doesn't, you know, uh, you know, at least like like if a golf guy doesn't make it on tour, he can you know he can still make money giving lessons and stuff. You know. Not, not, not that a lot of people are coming to me for comedy lessons. No, I mean, there's the same thought in radio. I, I know tons of people that they're scared to death if the, you know, the axe ever does come down because the station didn't make a certain amount of money during the year that you may not have a job. And they're like, I've done nothing else with my life at this point. Right, right. And that's especially when you're looking at a mortgage payment and, and school for your kids. And, you know, you go, oh, the, it's funny. You were talking about money. I was talking to a friend of mine the other day. I said, we were talking about all the, you know, out here in L.A. It's just crazy, stupid rich. Yeah. And, you know, I said, I remember a day, the first time I heard one of my friend's dad was a millionaire. And I remember thinking, well, what? <laughs> a millionaire? Now it's like out here. It's like, oh, you made a million? Oh, nice try. You yeah, <laughs> it's it's not that big of a deal anymore. No, no. Oh, I just want to try it, though. <laughs> yeah, just let, you know, as, as my friend says, I don't have to move into the city. I, I'll live in the suburbs. Just let me know. Yeah, the, no. Uh, we always have the conversation. It's like, if you win the lottery, is it going to ruin your life? It's like, I don't know, but I want to give it a try. Yeah, I at least get, you know, I saw, you know, you forget, I saw an interesting show about that. That, that They said that, like, something like 95% of the lottery winners within two years are broke. Yeah. Because they don't understand that, you know, you, 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 this isn't, that's why when I, like, when I play these casinos and stuff, and I see these people sitting at a slot machine for, and some of them, and I know I shouldn't judge, yeah. but some of them look like they shouldn't be there. You're not going to win life-changing money. You're good. You may win enough to pay some bills, but you're not going to be on million-dollar listing. Yeah, you're you not, <laughs> you're not all of a sudden Jeter. Yeah, yeah. It's like, I don't know. You know, it was funny. A friend of mine was talking, we were talking about Jordan Spieth, who I really like. Okay. A, pro golfer yeah and they said what's happened he's really fallen off and i said you know what if i was 25 years old and the thought occurred to me that i don't have to work another day in my life my whole give a dang is going way down <laughs> you know oh yeah i took seven to the masters <laughs> okay i'll be all right <laughs> like, did you do that i don't think so no 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 i'm mm-hmm. lucky if i win a five dollar nasa of my club <laughs> do you golf much I love golf. Do you? I, I, you know what? I wish I had discovered it earlier in my life. But, you know, when I was a kid, there was no golf camps. You know, there was, you know, no, you don't, you didn't get some private coach. You just took your dad's old banger clubs and you went out there and you tried to learn it. But, uh, but I do love it. And, and I've got to play some of the most beautiful courses. Uh, but it's, I will tell you this, though, it is the most, if, if, if you haven't taken it up in, to someone who's listening, don't. It is the most frustrating. It, it's like, <laughs> I was I always uh, now, uh, analyze golf as is that psychotic girlfriend you want to break up with. Yeah. But every once in a while she sleeps with you and it's so good you're like, "Okay, I'm back in for 6 months." <laughs> <laughs> the, there's really not a better description of golf than that. No, it isn't. You know, but I think the reason is is because I'm never going to hit a 97 mile an hour fastball. I'm never going to run a punt back on a pro team, but I might hit that golf shot like a pro does, whether it's a chip in, whether it's a, you know, a, a long putt and, but. Or just played, off the tee that day yeah, that you, did. that you hit it right down the middle, exactly where yeah. you want to go. And it goes further than you'd ever dream. And you think, wow, I did it. Yeah. 
I, I could do this. But, you know, I also thought, you know, I used to want to be a pro golfer. I, that was my dream. But thank God I didn't do that because, you know, at least with comedy, if I have a couple bad shows, I don't have to call Gail and go, um, yeah, I didn't make the cut. So I'm heading to uh, Deadwood, South Dakota to try to qualify again. <laughs> and by the way, we spent $5,000, so don't buy any clothes for the baby. Yeah, sorry about that. <laughs> yeah, sorry. <laughs> uh, what is it like coming up through uh, stand-up? And the only reason I ask is because uh, – uh, I started getting it watching that uh, Seinfeld thing on Netflix, the uh, right the, the cars thing, and you start hearing all these stories about the bombing and the you know kind of the road up that all of you guys go through. What was it like for you? You know what? I don't know if it was just out of stupidity or naivety, but I just have enjoyed pretty much every step along the way. There was times it was tough, but you know, comedy has also changed. You know, when I grew up in comedy, it was uh, it was like a fraternity. You okay. know, it was like, you know, we would hang out after the show and write jokes together and cut up and stuff. And now a lot of guys are kind of lone wolfing it. You know, they just they're just doing it just to get a TV show. And that's uh, that's 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 different than my thinking. I always wanted to be a comedian. The perks were I might get an acting job or a movie or a TV show or whatever. But that was never my main focus. My main focus was to be one of the best comedians out there. Here's the really random question. Do you think you accomplished that? Um, yeah, I do. And I don't mean that egotistically. I mean, I think that, you know, the fact that I have fans that are, you know, I've been doing this for 40 plus years now. So the fact that I have still have fans that will will spend their hard earned money to come see my show, like there in Iowa, the, uh, that's a that's a testament to what I've done, and you know because they could easily go somewhere else. Yeah, you know, there, there, it's not like there's any shortage of guys trying to make a living as a comedian. So, uh, and I think that what I've accomplished in my career I, I, is way more than I thought I would. Honestly, I mean, I really thought I'd probably be like the cruise director on a ship somewhere. You know, at some point, shuffleboard. Uh, not that that's everybody. a bad job, but you know, just like you know, it, it, I would have had to get a real job at some point. But the fact that I've been able to make a living and provide for my family and put two kids through college and uh, you know have a house that's paid for, it's like yeah. I, and I think that's part of the problem, buddy, is, is, is that we've muddled the definition of the word success. You know, to me, success is not how much you made in, in money monetarily. It's is, do you, are you able to provide for your family? Do you, are they good people? You know, are you raising yeah. good kids? You know, that's what to me success is. Uh, it's not a, a financial bar. Gotcha. Bill Engvall coming to the Horizon Events Center. I got, I better let you go because I was supposed to be out at like 15 and we're well past that now. <laughs> well, I have enjoyed every minute of this. And, and there, come on out. It's going to be a fun show. Uh, and let's have some laughs together. I appreciate it. Bill, have a good, uh, safe drive in and we'll see you on Saturday, okay? I fought. See you on Saturday, okay? I fought. See you on Saturday, okay? I fought.